spent many months debating on what Windows Gaming handheld to get. The reason I was looking for a Windows Gaming handheld was because there are a lot of games that I cannot play on my Steam Deck that I can play, well, on a Windows handheld because it runs Windows. Games such as Fortnite are not available on the Steam Deck due to it being of course an Epic Game Store exclusive as well as the anti-cheat system not always working on the Steam Deck. Another game that really comes to mind is Dragon Ball Fighters. Yes, you can play the single player mode on the Steam Deck, but when it came to multiplayer, it just doesn't work because of the anti-cheat mode. Warzone is another one there. In the end, I ended up with the ROG Ally because it seemed to be the best bang for your buck in terms of sale price. Not only that, when it came to features and performance, it seemed to be on top. But there are certain things that I wasn't expecting that actually surprised me on the ROG Ally. But before I get into that, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers and we're so close. So every bit does help out. So I'll share the channel that helps out a lot as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the ROG Ally. ROG Ally is a Windows gaming handheld similar to the Steam Deck where it has a 7 inch display, 120 hertz display which is actually better than the Steam Deck and has a really nice crisp LCD panel. Honestly I was very surprised at the LCD screen that it has. It's very crisp. Playing Dragon Quest on there just made all the colors pop and yeah like a lot of reviews have talked about it and definitely it's a very nice LCD. One of the best. Not as sharp as the PlayStation Portal's display, which actually surprised me because the PlayStation Portal display is actually really, really good, but it's still very good, a lot better than the Steam Deck LCD display. It runs Zen 4 architecture CPU with RDNA, RDNA 3 graphics and has the Z1 Extreme or the Z1 depending on the model you get. I of course picked up the Z1 Extreme, which was on sale from Best Buy at $5.99, which is a very good price. As far as the look and feel of the ROG Ally, it feels pretty comfortable. When I first tried it out, I wasn't a big fan. I thought it was kind of awkward shaped and I couldn't really grip it right. But after playing it with some time, it actually got, I don't know, like comfortable. I got very used to it and it just seemed right. I do like that it was a little bit lighter than the Steam Deck. At least I felt a little bit lighter than the Steam Deck. So I didn't really get tired from holding it while playing it in bed or anything like that. The only thing I wasn't a fan of was really the back buttons. It just feels kind of cheap and the face buttons are, I don't know. They just felt weird for whatever reason. The D-pad actually surprised me. I wasn't a fan of the D-pad when I saw it because I really hate like that Xbox 360 look to the D-pad. But actually using it, it's not that bad. It's actually pretty good. I just don't really like that plasticky feel. It has like a really cheap plastic feel to it. But as far as functionality, hey, it works really, really good. The thumbsticks are also very nice. It feels very good. I know some people have complained about the dead zones on the thumbsticks. I personally didn't have any issue. I think I thought they felt great with every game that I played with. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> those are pretty good as well. But outside of the hardware, let's talk about the software part. The biggest thing is it ran Windows, and because it ran Windows, this allowed me to play games that I couldn't play on my Steam Deck. Great example was Fortnite. I was able to play Fortnite, no problem on there. All I had to do was go ahead and install the Epic Game Store, then download the game, and it worked. Which is very, very good. Pretty much no hassle there. It just works because, again, it's a Windows computer. But on the flip side, because it is Windows, there was also a lot of frustrations with it. For starters, the setup process is very annoying. It's not really complicated by all means, it's just very time consuming. When you go ahead and set up the ROG Ally, you start off with the whole Windows update system. So depending on the ROG Ally you get, you have to go ahead and do the whole Windows update. Once Windows update is done, which can take some time, then you have to go ahead and do the Armory, Armory Crate system update which can take some time as well. Once you're done with that, you have to go ahead and do the ASUS system update, which is separate from Armory Crate for whatever reason that has other like driver information and updates and stuff like that there. 
For me, it took me about, give or take, maybe three hours to get everything done and settled because of the updates. There was a lot of updating, restarting, going to update, restarting. A couple times in Armory Crate, it actually updated and restart. And then when I press look for update, it had to update again. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. I'm not sure if for whatever reason it doesn't fully update or maybe it glitched out on me and I just had to redo it. But I did have to do it twice for some reason. After that, it did pop up the, the ASUS system there, which I forgot the name of it. You have to go ahead on there and pretty much update. I believe it's called My ASUS. You have to update some drivers there as well. But once all that is settled and done, then yeah, you're pretty much good to start. Once Armory Crate is done and everything's done there, that is pretty much what you're going to use to go ahead and kind of organize your games or get into the settings of the ROG Ally. Within Armory Crate, there's a couple things you can do. You can go to the settings tab that allows you to go ahead and customize things such as your RGB lighting. You can set up like GPU systems. So for example, if you're by default set up to I believe four gigs of RAM, and if you play a game that needs more VRAM, you can go ahead and adjust that. You can enable things like RSR, RIS, there's a Radeon cooler or cool boost, I believe it's called. There's CPU boost there and so forth. There's a bunch of different things there that you can play around with. There's also a contents tab, which kind of, I don't know, I didn't really play around with it much. Your updates are there, but then there's like a section to go ahead and install other launchers. There's another like ASUS thing that looks like it's like a game store. I'm not sure where they're pulling these things on, but you got like little reward points you can get for it. You get discounts on it and so forth. And there's like a sweepstakes thing that was always there. I mean, you can go ahead and sign up for that if you want. But for the most part, the main page is really where you're gonna be at. And that's where all your games will appear. If your game doesn't appear, you can go ahead and hit the add button and then look for the game that you just installed and it will add on there. It usually grabs the box art for you. I think the only issue I had was with Fortnite where for whatever reason, it was just the icon that said F and that was it. But all the other games kind of grabbed the box art on its own. I had like like a Dragon Gaiden on there. It grabbed the box art there. It even grabbed Xbox Game Store on there as well. You also have a quick settings menu, which allows you to go ahead and swap out like your TDP. So you can change it from being silent mode, which is 10 watt, performance mode, which is 15 watts. And then there's a turbo mode, which is 25 watts. Or if you're plugged in, it becomes 30 watts. There's also a manual mode and you can create as many manual modes as you want. I didn't really use that function as much. You can customize it however you want. It, to me, just personally, I felt like the easiest way was just to go from 10 to 15 to 25 or 30, depending on what you were using. If you plug it in by default, it should go ahead and boost to 30, which I guess if you wanna play wired, that is cool. And as far as gameplay goes, it just works for the most part. You go ahead, you have your games installed and it works because it's Windows, but there's some things that I did not like about it. There's actually quite a few things that I didn't like. Everything that I mentioned now is a positive, and I would say they were the positive experience I've had for it in terms of overall functionality, feel, and everything. But there's a lot more negatives to it than positives that I had. Now, I don't want this to sound like I'm dunking on the ROG Ally. I do think it's a great machine. I think some people will really enjoy it. But let me start with some negatives and why I don't think the machine was for me. Starting off with battery life. The battery life is pretty bad. Now I've heard a lot of people complain about battery life for the most part and not to expect more than two hours out of it, which I, I got it. Like, you know, it's Windows, right? It's gonna run a lot heavier, a lot hotter and so forth. But there's like a lot of issues I have with the battery life. For me, when I buy a handheld, battery life is very important. I know when the Switch first came out, it wasn't the best battery life, but at least I got three hours of battery life for the most part. With the Steam Deck, I do like that I can customize my TDP and my frame rate to kind of limit the power draw so I can go ahead and get as much battery life as I want. But for the most part, when I'm running games at 40 FPS, I'm typically getting three plus hours where I'm trying to think maybe Final Fantasy VII Remake and maybe Resident Evil 4 were like the only games I can get about two to two and a half hours of battery life. But for the most part, every game that I played on my Steam Deck, I was able to get three plus hours of it. And that's the LCD model as I don't have the OLED model. But when it came to the ROG Ally, I couldn't break the two hour mark. No matter what game I played, 
I just couldn't break that two hour battle life mark. A great example is Fortnite. I would play Fortnite and yes, I was playing at 60 FPS, but I was hoping to get a little bit more than two hours. I couldn't get that. I would play about four games and then from there I was already around 30ish percent when it came to battery life and I had to go ahead and get a charger. And that was very annoying. This was something that was happening frequently. Same thing happened with Resident Evil 4. With Resident Evil 4 Remake, I would play, and I was playing not at 60 FPS, I was actually playing at 45 FPS with the same graphic settings that I had on the Steam Deck, and I was not getting two hours of battery life at all. Not only that, one thing that I noticed is with the ROG Ally, I actually had to push my system TDP higher than the Steam Deck to be able to get similar performance. Now on the Steam Deck, there is the issue where I go ahead and zoom in. I actually lose like quality or frames, which is kind of weird. I don't know why it does that on the Steam Deck. I didn't really see that in the ROG Ally. But outside of that, I was able to play Resident Evil 4 with a lower TDP and still get about the same frame rate, if not better. And of course, better battery life. And that was very, very annoying because that was something that I was actually looking forward to. Other games that I played, such as like Monster Hunter Stories 2, Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest Builders, all of those games, I could only get about two hours before I had to plug it in. Again, very annoyed that I had to plug it in. I wasn't expecting much battery life out of Fortnite and Warzone, but I was also expecting at least around two hours from there, which to me is a good sweet spot, like a bare minimum. If I can play two hours of these games, yeah, I'm fine with it. But with Fortnite, it definitely didn't feel like two hours. Like I said, it was only about four games before I had to go ahead and plug it into power. Warzone was even worse. Not only that, Warzone, for whatever reason for me, had crashed twice on me. And like, I, it was just very hard to go ahead and get a game running on there. Of course, I would use things like FSR to go ahead and allow me to kind of play at lower settings while also being able to perform pretty decent. But yeah, it still crashed on me. Even in emulation, I wasn't able to break that two hour mark. I was playing Path of Radiance, Fire Emblem, of course, through Dolphin. And yeah, <laughs> when it came to playing it, I would get about two hours at 10 TDP. And yeah, it would just kind of not pass the two hour mark. I even tried lowering the TDP on there and it was still the same issue. I don't know why it was just that two hour hard mark. It just would yeah that was basically the time that i was getting with that and it was very very annoying the other thing that was weird is that again one of the other reasons i got the rlg ally was to be able to play games that were not compatible with the steam deck or that weren't steam deck verified or had issues on the steam deck on the rlg ally but instead i was actually getting the opposite for starters when i was trying to play star ocean the divine force I was having really bad frame rate issues and I had to really adjust it to get it to work right. Finally, I got it to work pretty decent at 45 FPS, but I encountered some weird bug when I would go ahead and rest at the end and I would play this cutscene. After the cutscene, it would just crash on me and it took different amount of time for it to crash, but it would just crash. And I don't know what was going on there. With the Steam Deck though, this game again, is not Steam Deck verified and it's not compatible with the Steam Deck. I was able to boot it up, actually play that cutscene, and continue playing after the cutscene, and it never crashed. Very, very weird. Now, performance in that game specifically was definitely better on the ROG Ally, but yeah, it didn't crash at all. Not only that, I had to do a huge shader compilation before I started the game, and it took a very long time. I want to say about an hour for me to have that shader compile or all those shaders compiled. Very annoying. When it came to Steam Deck, that never came up at all. It just, I went and downloaded it, booted it up, and it just worked. And this was a reoccurring theme. There was just weird bugs that I was encountering on the ROG Ally that I just wasn't getting on the Steam Deck for similar games. The other thing that surprised me was that certain games would actually run better on the Steam Deck versus the ROG Ally when I was expecting the ROG Ally to actually run better. And it just seems that at 15 watts or lower, the Steam Deck kind of shines. You can get better performance on the Steam Deck over the ROG Ally. The only reason to get the ROG Ally is if you want to use it beyond 15 watts. And that's, again, personal opinion. I just don't see myself using it 
at 15 watts or lower because of that reason and that's mainly because of the battery life another weird bug that i encountered was utilizing rsr now rsr is radeon super resolution which is basically fsr but at the driver level it is a cool feature that's built in to the rog ally of course the steam deck has fsr 1.0 available you know, system wide but when it came to rsr for whatever reason it does not work with the frame limiter at least that's what people say there was a few times that i had rsr enabled and also the frame limiter enabled to 45 fps that it worked flawless with no problem but there were a lot of times where it just didn't work now people do say on reddit and so forth that they don't work together which i guess that's kind of correct because if i would shut off rsr and then leave the frame limiter on it worked perfectly fine but the minute i turned it on yeah i had issues there the other thing that was very annoying about that is that in order to use rsr the game cannot be open meaning that you kind of have to wait and mess around with your settings first then exit the game then go back into the game with rsr turned on for it to function not only that the game needs to be in full screen mode for it to function correctly as well and of course you want to lower it lower than 1080p because the way rsr works is like fsr it upscales that image into a higher resolution which can then give you you know better performance because it's not natively running at that resolution and there's another feature that they have built in there which is called ris which is radeon image sharpening i believe it is which is basically allowing you to get a sharper image overall this is good for if you're playing a game at a lower resolution or not even that at lower quality textures and stuff like that but you want to go ahead and sharpen those textures you can turn that on and of course go into the game and this will allow you to get just a sharper image now for me personally i couldn't tell the difference with that turned on and with it turned off it might be because the display is so small it's hard to see a difference but at least in portable mode i couldn't really see the difference there maybe if you're docked and you have that enabled you can probably see a bigger difference but like i said for me personally i did not see a difference on the small display there now again, this is the opposite of how the Steam Deck works. With the Steam Deck, the game could already be running and you can enable FSR and turn it on and you can actually see your sharpening values and you can see it adjust in real time without any issues. Of course, similar to how it functions on ROG Ally, you do have to lower the resolution to be able to actually see the effects happen, but for the most part, it just works. And I'm not exactly sure why it just didn't work properly in the ROG Ally. I did read somewhere that it's if you have asus's little monitor real-time monitor turned on that allows you to go ahead and see your stats for whatever reason that affects rsr and frame limiter but if you use the msi afterburner it doesn't i kind of saw that happening i did download afterburner to kind of see my fps and i did enable rsr while the frame limiter was running and i was getting certain games to get 45 fps no matter what and like i said even sometimes without that running i was able to get games to run at 45 fps so it might just be some type of driver or bug issue that's with that under our rg ally those might sound like some minor things but to me those were some huge things that honestly really bothered me about the rog ally i was really looking forward to having the rog ally i was actually very excited because i'll be able to play games that i just couldn't on my steam deck not only that when i was really looking at it i was hoping for some better performance even if i wasn't gonna get similar battery life i already knew that i was gonna skip out on battery life but i wasn't expecting it to be that bad because a lot of people talk about the steam deck's battery life but of course when you see people utilizing their devices they're probably using it at max tdp with as much settings as possible to get the highest frame rate i'm not that type of person when i play my games on my steam deck i always lower the frame rate to at least 40 fps you know because i want to maximize the battery life as much as i can I'm also getting pretty decent performance i tried doing the same things that i would do on the steam deck with the rog ally and no matter what i just couldn't get two hours of battery life i don't know what it is about it it's probably windows i'm sure windows has a lot to do with it because it's just a heavier system it draws a lot more power there's a lot of background tasks that are just there running on windows but still i I don't know, I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. Again, it's the way I utilize my handhelds. Battery life is very important to me personally. And that was just a shame. Not only that, because of the Steam Deck, the performance differences, I just don't felt it was worth it. Because of the ROG Ally being, you know, on paper more powerful, 
I was definitely expecting it to be just you know better performance at a lower TDP as well, but that was not the case. But those are my thoughts on the ROG Ally, and like I said, I don't think it's for me. Unfortunately, by the time I'm making this video, I already returned the ROG Ally after having it for two weeks and playing around with it. I just got very, very annoyed that I wasn't getting the battery life. Again, it's very annoying to have to go ahead and get a handheld and plug it in all the time. Now, I know there are people that really love the ROG Ally and don't mind that. I've talked to plenty of people that, you know, they use it around the house. They have a charger with them and they plug it in and they don't mind using it while plugging it in. Me personally, I hate using my handhelds while plugging in. If I'm low on battery, no matter what device I'm having, I just go ahead and either dock my switch, for example, or I put my Steam Deck on this charger and I just let it charge. I don't utilize them while they're charging. I like my phone, right? When I'm low battery on my phone, I just charge it and walk away from it because I just don't want to use it plugged in. In this case, I had to use it quite a few times to go ahead and you know finish a game, for example. Like I was at the ending of Resident Evil 4 for the longest time I did not beat it and I decided to go ahead and play through it on the ROG Ally for testing. And yeah, before I could even finish the game, I had to go ahead and plug it in and finish the rest of the game while it was plugged in. A couple other things were Fortnite when I was playing with my kids, I had to have it plugged in to go ahead and continue playing with them. Again, very, very annoying, but that is a huge negative to me, and that's why I returned to ROG Ally. I do hope that the next ROG Ally has a bigger battery. I feel that if the ROG Ally had the MSI Claws battery, then you probably can get a pretty decent battery life, maybe three to four hours of battery while having some decent settings. And that's the biggest and only negative I really have for the ROG Ally. Like honestly, when it came to performance, yeah, it's some weird one-offs, but it's not something that was unseen. Elden Ring, if you remember, had an issue where on PCs, it was having very bad stuttering issues, but when it came to playing it on the Steam Deck, those stuttering issues were not there at all. So yeah, I was expecting some like weird one-offs like that, but when it came to battery life, I was not expecting that. And that's my only negative. That's really the only negative I have for the ROG Ally. Everything else about it, it's a great machine. Feels great, plays great. Honestly, the screen is amazing. A very, very good LCD display. And everything else about it, I thought it was a really good job in terms of making a Windows handheld gaming system, you know, accessible and usable but let me know your thoughts on the rog ally do you have one do you actually like it do you think i'm crazy for returning it <laughs> i'd like to know that definitely leave your thoughts in the comment section below if you don't have the rog ally and you chose one of the other ones like the Le lenovo legion go or even msi call let me know why you chose those things but yeah thanks for watching don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as i said earlier trying to hit a thousand subscribers so close to doing that every little bit does help out Share the channel, that does help out a lot. And hey, come and hang out with us on the podcast. We did switch the time to the podcast every Saturday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, for right now at least. So definitely come in and hang out. We do do those live on both Twitch and YouTube. My name is James. I'll catch you guys next time.